thank you for coming to another uh, session for uh, you know Amitabha Youth Group. Um, this one is uh, we're going to begin with a new readings on a new book called Treaties on Response and Retributions. Um, actually, there's two more words that are not included by the exalted one. We'll uh, try to explain what it is in accordance to the um, books, the reference from Master Ching Kong, from uh, Master Ying Guang, and Master Ching Kong's teacher, Master, uh, Mr. Li, Master Li. So um, today, we'll, before we begin, let's chant 10 times Amitofo, um, and then we'll proceed with the readings. Amitofo, 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 Thank you everyone for coming on this uh, today or any day. <laughs> this is recorded. Uh, the Treaties on Response and Retributions by the Exalted One. In Chinese, it's called Tai Shang Gan Ying Pian. Um, this one is a translation I managed to found, just a disclaimer, uh, online. And this is going in accordance to the Master Ching Kong's speech um, on explaining what is this treatise. So I would like to give a foreword, put more emphasis on what is Taizang Gan Yin Pian, trying to explain its core ideas and its relevance to our current uh, society, to our current cultivations. Um, just for context, we are a Pure Land school. We are practicing Pure Land school of Buddhism. So we use a lot of um, Pure Land uh, uh, terms that has related to Pure Land schools. But this does not detract from the fact of its importance in as a founding block for any practitioners of any form of teachings, including any form of religion. This is a universal uh, values that we're talking about. We're not talking about just for one teachings, one religions. Although the wordings may have implication of gods and ghosts and spirits, but it is not about them in its own. It's about how the cause and effect works in visible sight or invisible sight. So in public or in private. And this all are being used to, un to let us understand there are much um, bigger things at work than what we thought. But none of them detracts from the fact that you saw what you reap. And this is the the core, uh, the, the value of this book to us nowadays. You read what you saw, sorry. You read what you saw, all right? Um, and these teachings were reflected in all religions, all major religions that talks about, um, you know, being good will beget good. Being bad will beget bad. Those people who uh, dig a uh, hole to, you know, create a trap for others will end up falling into the trap itself. I remember there is a phrase in Bible that talks about that. Uh, I, would, I, would, I think there is the same thing for Quran and others. So this is what I'm trying to say is this is a universal value that we are learning about. And what is that universal value? Um, first of all, virtue and morality. That means human decency. Uh, this decency is get, uh, further enforced by the value of cause and effect. Because without cause and effect, it would be like a society without laws, and without um, consequences which is not possible. Everything you do has consequences. Being decent means that within the confines of law, you are acting in accordance to society, you know, being nice, being kind. But what if you are not? What if you are um, unleashed in a way that harms many people? What kind of consequences would that be? And this book, Treaties on Response and Retribution, as per the title, is very clear, telling us, what if you're not? Even 
what if if you're abiding by well by law, but more than that, virtues and moralities of your uh, communities of your teachings, um, the what kind of response will you get? If you're not abiding by the law, not abiding by the basic standards of human decency, being kind, being uh, truthful, you know, being real, then what kind of retributions will you receive? So, um, so this is the um, the central uh, the the principle of this book, uh, the premise of this book. So we involve Master Ching Kong because we are following. This is um, promoted by him, following his teacher, uh, Mr. Li Bingnan, and following his teacher's teachers, which is grand teacher, Master Ying Guang. And Master Ying Guang, uh, we need to explain his um, lineage. He's a 13th, 13th patriot of the Pure Land School. Uh, he was born in late Qing Dynasty, and he was, um, uh, how to say, a very, a very sharp guy. Every word he say goes st straight to the point without any... Um, no, no wasted words. Basically, everything he said is straight to the point. And on one of the letters that he wrote, correspondence with one of his uh, students across the world. Basically, he doesn't have a student of his own. He has a something like a like a columnist, columnist in modern sense. You know, a magazine, a, a person who is very wise and very nice. And he wrote articles on you know these societies what's the issues we have what could, could we do something like in on the washington post or something like that new york post and everyone just loves him and, and everyone wrote back letters to him through the you know the contact information so he replied one by one and there is a lot of uh, lay buddhists that collects his response the q a like you know socrates you know so socrates in the ancient greece they they also q a with his students something like that so this is that method they have it collected into a book. So in his actual work in the Buddhist community, he printed a lot of those, what we call as non-Buddhist book. If we use the the term Buddhist in a narrow sense, as in it has to be involving Buddha, Bodhisattvas. Because a lot of the book he printed, including the one I have been presenting for months now, I think, until Yenzu will know, um, is, you know, the... The Liao Fan, the Four Lessons of Liao Fan. I think that one is more well known. And the uh, Mr. Yu who met the Stove God. Uh, last night I said Kitchen God, but I read the translation. It's actually Stove God. But anyway, those are all about cause and effect. This one is <clears throat> the 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 could you we can say the mother of these two books in a sense because the person who wrote the Mr. Uh, the Liao Fan's Four Lessons which is Mr. Liao Fan, and Mr. Yu, who wrote the book of Chronicles of Mr. Yu, who met the stove god, they all practice based on this treatise. So this is kind of like you're going back to the mother of them all. And even as a Buddhist, um, we always remember Buddha talk about karma. And this is basically a sutra on the cause and effect, on, on the karma, how karma works. Um, Master Ching Kong continues the traditions and continue to print this widespread and incorporate as a foundational studies, not studies, foundational practice for a Buddhist, whatever school you are. As long as you want to actually gain enlightenment to escape from the six realms, this is one of the pillar, the foundational pillar you need to have. This is Tai Shang Gai Pian. The other one is Di Zhu Gui, which is how to be a decent human. Guidelines of being a good person. And then the uh, and then the Buddhist one, which is the 10th uh, meritorious, the Sutra of uh, 10 meritorious uh, virtues. Shi San Ye Dao Jing, Fo Shu Shi San Ye Dao Jing. So these three pillars, Tai Shang Gai Pian, Di Zhu Gui, Shi San Ye Dao Jing. Um, all of them talk about um, how to be decent from Di Zhu Gui or the guideline of being a good person, and this one is cause and effect, consequences of being good, are uh, being bad, and the rewards of being good, which is what this book is about. And then the 10 meritorious virtues, building on the previous two blocks. So these are, there are system there. What I'm trying to say is there are system there, and it's not, you know, don't jump the gun. Once you understand the importance of this in your cultivation, no matter what your religion is, 
or, or whatever, whatever you believe or not believe, um, then you will reap the reward that you're looking forward to or absence of. You know, yeah. So, okay, anyway, but we we're going back to the point. So this is um, uh, a book that uh, we would explore in many, many times and it, it, cannot, it cannot be done in two readings. It's a long one. Even though the book uh, volume is very thin, you know, if you look at the actual physical size, but if you want to expand, uh, this is core principle, all right? This is the translate. This is the original text. This is the translation attempt. This is the commentary, and and then once they go through the first few um, in uh, intro section one principle, a lot of them is all about you know <clears throat> what is right, what is wrong. Basically, they all talk about what is right, what is wrong. So this is what is right. So all this is talking about a standard, basically, like a law, right? You have constitution, and then constitution gives you a spirits of the letter, uh, spirits of the law. And then to do it, you need to follow the letter of the law, something like that. And this is the spirit of the law, and uh, spirit of the law in the chapter one, and then letter of the law, what is actually lawful and unlawful. But in our case, it's not just simply you ain't you know you ain't you ain't uh, incriminated if you ain't got caught. No, uh, this is this is karma. <laughs> no, no matter where you are, what do you do, it will come back to you, bite you in the back if you do bad. If if you do good, doesn't matter people see or not see, you will get rewarded. So this is section two is about what is good. As you can see, it's not a lot uh, to say about um, because. Um, I will explain when we get into it. Section 3 is the meat of the entire book. <laughs> okay, so this is the, um, this like like I said, the, the constitution in a sense. And then we, we go into the actual, you know, practice, the reinforceable part, like in accordance to the constitution, what can we do? All right. And this is the English translation. So section 2 is about the virtues, which is the good. And section 3 is about the bad, the offenses. <laughs> So you can use it in in a legal way to understand this. This is quite quite fun to think about. If you, I mean, quite easier to understand if you think of the legal way. But it's about moral and virtues as well. So everything here onwards, as you can see, the big chunk of the translation, are, are, are in a to avoid the risk of getting like I'm just trying to show you how many it is. <laughs> uh, see, they have many uh, offenses. 84 offenses and then there's a commentary section 4 is the retribution of those offenses so section 1 and section 2 section 1 is the principle of the entirety what is karma and stuff section 2 is about the virtues uh, these virtues and its response of the virtues the reward of the virtues section 3 is just about the criminal offense something like a penal code you know according to the law penal code 1 uh, article 3 something like that and then section 4 is the uh, punishment that befits the crime. Basically, uh, in Chinese, 如是等罪, 思命随其, 轻重, 多其计算, 算尽则是, 死有余故, 乃央及子孙. For such crime, depending on the severity of the act, the lifespan of the offender will be shortened accordingly. If when death results the full punishment, the crime has yet accounted for, the punishment for unaccounted portion will be fought on the offender's descendants. Something like a guarantor's debt will be passed on to the guarantor. If the person who owed the debt will be is dead. It will be paid by anyone related to them. And this last section is talking about, you know, the whole point of this, you know, telling you all these principles. What's the point? What do we try to get out of this? You know, to tell us, in fact, the whole point of being good, I mean, the, 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 the cost of offending the laws of karma is pointless it's harmful it's harmful not to you only to your loved ones to people around you and the person the, the the while being good might not reap the result obviously or uh, might seem like you're being punished for just being a good samaritan or something because there are also elements of time in karma and this one they don't go that deep as buddhism did uh, if, if we go to buddhist uh, collections of karmic Talk, thinking they talk, even talk about space and time space is um, you know uh, time is past present future space is uh, uh, no matter where you are you know, past life this life next life but 
this is the foundational text just to get you understand you know, being evil has no reward at all. All the reward you get now, we will need to repay tenfold in future. So it's not reward at all. It's just punishing yourself. And it's pointless. That's the spirit of the law. Okay. And there are questions of who's, uh, who's unleashing the punishments. You know, who is the one who has the right to punish? In the uh, monotheism society of, you know, Christianity, uh, Islamic uh, faith, or even the ta um, the, ta the Judaism, they will say God is the judge. We have no right to judge. And if we understand the word God in the forms of laws of nature, laws of karma, then that's right. And what? who makes the laws of karma? Ourself. What is what? What does it mean? So we'll go deep into that. You know, there's so many questions like who who made this happening? Who who enlists this punishment? Who has the right? But to be honest, no one is the article of it. Or rather, everyone is the article of their own punishment. It's like spitting into the air only for the flame uh, for the for the for the flame uh, for the spit to come back in your face. All right. I'll bring out a recent example. I think even in US is very famous of a person who has defamed another person and use all the lies and spin all the webs, ends up tying herself up and being seen by the whole world as a liar she is. I'm pretty sure everyone knows who she is, right? especially in the United States. I've been watching that legal proceedings for two days, nonstop. Literally a, a blessing for me who wants to talk about Tai Sang Gai Pian. Treaties on response and retribution. This is a live response and retribution. Right. And as everyone can see very clearly of all the evidence, cross examination, it's it's tying yourself up. You know, spinning more lies, more web will put yourself in deeper, deeper hole that you cannot or very hard to climb out of. So <clears throat> back to the actual teaching now. Action one, cause and effect. So <clears throat> In Chinese sense, I would use, uh, I mean, while we have the words here, I would still use the um, the original text as the base, the, the spring of point. But this um, language is a bit more older, even than uh, the one from Mr. Yu's and Mr. Liao Fan's four lessons, because this is actually quite, in even in China standards, oh, like ancient China standards. So um, it's already considered simple, but yeah. My language language is not there. So the first section, it's the it's what the whole book is about. Basically, the first sentence, and every time you look at what happens after in the book, what to describe after, it's just to expand this point. So let's look into it. The exalted one. In this case is Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu, everyone I think very familiar with. Uh, it's a very famous figure. Uh, Chinese philosophist we call him but actually is a sage um, and he has written another book called the Tao Te Ching the, the, the book of um, the book of the way and the, uh, the, the, part, uh, the I don't know how to say in English if we use, use more and virtues it's also right book of more and virtues but it's more than that um, fortune and mystery do, misery do not happen at random and nor are they a result of chance or machinations. It's very important, guys. It's not luck or unlucky. <laughs> they are instead caused by karmic actions of each individual. The rewards for a person's virtue and good deeds, as well as the consequences of evil deeds, follow each like a shadow. So without saying, what Lao Tzu trying to tell us is, you know, um, whatever is good, whatever is bad that happens before us, fortune and misfortune, um, it might seem like there is no, uh, like there is no set path, you know. There's no set rules that happens. It might seem random. Then, thank go thank goodness for this translation in Chinese. I think I I got very muddy in this explanation. See, looking at translation, it helps me. Um. Anyway, so they are they seem random. They seem like it's a lottery. Say, like me, uh, falling on the bike, you know, falling off the bike. That happens today. Um, it might seem like a lottery, but it's because it's so complex. You can't see the actual web that is behind it. Um, machinations means someone else controlling you, or maybe a punishment 
given by a, a deity or something else or someone else planning plotting no um so what why why did that happen how did that happen you made it happen <laughs> so we are the one that is fully responsible for whatever happened to us and people might jump and say what about those bad you know um encounters or even worse like rape like i'm going very heavy topic straight away and all this bad stuff i have to tell you without any doubt yes i'm not saying about this life and this victim should be uh something like that no justice will be dispensed according to the human laws but what we're talking about karmic laws is um we read what we saw it's not a it's not a it's not a opinion saying that serves you right is what it is it's it's something happened in the long past it's like a debt that you have incurred needs to be paid someday and there are many conditions that allows the debt to be forego or allows the debt to be light lightened also there are conditions that makes the debt worse or doubled up so it's not fixed in stone and you're not like bound to misery all the time but as a normal people who doesn't have huge meritorious deeds to i wouldn't say offset to to um to lighten the load that we have incurred the debt we have incurred in the past then we got to have to accept whatever form of uh you know punishment or rewards that we have so the whole, uh, without going without the risk of going too deep the whole point is doesn't matter good or bad that happened to you um it's on it's caused by uh, the karmic actions of each of us um and the rewards so this is the principle of cause and effect all right uh we read what we saw no matter when no matter where and no matter how all right if your time is up you when you're sitting at home well protected from everything it will come to you in form of you know stroke or something like that if your time is not up you when you're in the middle of cross section and all the cars will run away from you or for some reason in the war zone even more obvious the bullets hits your your comrade instead of you even though you're standing at the right position that are supposed to be shot that but it's your comrade that got it we call it random because we don't know what's happening that's all we can do from what what we can from our limited knowledge but person who have enlightened and seen everything they understand is karma and please do not use this karma as a way to laugh at people jeer at people's misery please do not take it that way because this is like a scientist trying to describe a phenomenon they put a word to it and this word we call it karma it's like a wheel it comes back to you in a circle what goes around comes around so it's an observation a scientific observation the observer has the ability to see through beyond the six uh, five senses right doesn't mean it's not science it's just that it's high level now the rewards for a person's virtue and good deeds this uh, this comes into action so now we talk about what happens to us and now we talk about the cause and effect uh what's the implication of it they are good and bad right so rewards for a person's virtue and good deeds as well as the consequences of evil deeds follow each other like a shadow so these rewards are not um like not unlike human Well, there are mistakes. There are no mistakes in karma. There's no mistakes in karma. Uh, it's exactly tailored to exactly what you have. Obviously, subject to change to your condition. Based on your condition, it will change. But that's level two, right? Let's learn one plus one before we learn all the other stuff. So, um, the rewards will always come to you like exactly how much you do good, and the and the evil deeds as well. It will comes to you like exactly how much you do evil um here commentary from master ching kong mentioned that uh the sage uh yeah in buddhist he's actually a buddhist savant in a sense he, yeah anyway but yeah he is a sage he already concurs with the buddhist concept of karma if a man experiences misfortune has nothing to do with others 
or what he perceived to be the cause, but instead brought on to himself by the evil that he has committed in this life or the previous life. So this man is a good man. He has been through um, a lot, including him. Yeah, I can't help but bring that case. Uh, being in a marriage that caused him his career, his fingers, <laughs> his, um, his, uh, his health, mental health and uh, everything. Even in his uh, childhood, he um, got uh, also uh, into this similar situation from his mom. But he able to take it and not being negative. He able to bring, you know, a sore in his career and still remain a good man, even though he has fallen into a wrong path with substance abuse, but he able to hold himself and not being violent. So this is a good man with all its faults and uh, faults. Um, and he still received this kind of karmic, uh, karmic uh, repercussions. And he rightfully uh, fight for his name uh, in a way that is lawful and legal. And it takes him six years to get there. So that means his debt is paid after six years. And finally, when this karmic exhausted, this uh, woman that has gripped on his life in a negative way is finally shown to the world who she is. And he's finally free from this uh, bondage uh, of uh, being chained, um, emotional bondage by this uh, woman. So we can we can understanding this law, then we understand that okay, so maybe he's paying back all this you know fifty years of his life. He's paying back all the bad deeds, and he without committing um, the same evil that he has suffered. Uh, although he has, you know, sway a bit into that substance abuse, but he's he's not bringing on this kind of a suffering onto other people. Maybe I don't know, but from what we've seen, the testimonies is not. Then he he has paid the debt without incurring more debts. So hence he he able to pay off precisely last few uh, until a few days ago. Uh, he's free. He's truly a free man. Um, obviously, in the sense of the worldly matters. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, uh, there are there uh, it can happen anytime, anywhere. And the person who incur on you is only the condition, not the cost. Condition can be a person, can be a thing, uh, can be can be can be a event. So when condition is calm, we uh, the seeds that we have sowed will blossom into the result, in the free, we come to fruition. So this is the whole concept of karma. Um, sorry for my um, Mahdi explanation. Yes, I'm using Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's case, but uh, I think this is one of the most relevant and uh, uh, most publicized event that I can use for what we call a cause and effect. Um, so now we continue. Depending on the severity of personal offense, so now we continue with uh, the actual uh, how to say implications of the you know virtuous deeds and and the uh, offenses. Uh, so there are standards for this, all right? Because right now we might fall into a bracket of you know because we have no you know overarching authority like the church in the Europe or you know the the prominence of churches in United States and other. Western countries getting lesser, the moral authority is lesser. Doesn't mean that there's no standard. Same in East Asia, just because, you know, people, you know, has departed from the conservative traditional way of living, um, doesn't mean that there is no standard. All right. These teachings trying to tell you that what is already, what is working in the universe and trying to put it in letters so that you can follow. And obviously, if you level up your cultivation, you will be able to observe the law yourself, following the path they, they led you to a point where you don't need to re rely on the book and you'll be able to observe it straightforward. That's what Buddhism is trying to tell you. You will be able to decide your own destiny once you understand the law, how it works, and go along the path of righteousness and not being swayed by it, but also not be tied up by the letters of the law being free without incurring offenses. Uh, uh, Confucius' most famous word, 
at the age of 80 or 70, forgot, um, he has reached a level where he could do whatever he wants, but without incurring on any negative karma or negative deeds. That means anything he do is in accordance to the, well, custom is a very rough part of the virtues, the, to, to the actual you know, virtues inside. Like he's, he's real, he's true, and he's, but he's not like very bound. He's very free, free without breaking the law in a sense. All right. So back to here. So these two sections is talking about uh, punishments or rewards or punishment. So the first part is talking about um, there is a God like in the Chinese sense, in the East Asian sense. They're like the auditors, uh, yearly auditors. They audit what you have, uh, plus and minus, your account book. So this is like auditors or, um, ex uh, you know, I don't know, prosecutors or something, legal examiners that looks into your um, merits and faults. And following how, I mean, depending on how severe or how uh, uh, light your your, 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 your punishment, uh, your deed is, they will incur the penalties. And these penalties come in the form of um, po impoverishments, uh, disasters, um, you know, being uh, uh, like bad reputations, uh, punishments uh, and 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 all the fortunes avoiding you like promotions or good relationships or something like that and also a lot of calamities befalling you once your um, kind of like a score has reached zero you die um, and please don't 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 for a second think death is the end of it no there's no end there's a whole point of the cycle of samsara in Buddhism because of this the worst part is not the death if death can solve everything then there's no uh, no need for us to go work so hard and reading this book <laughs> trying to uh, do all the good deeds or charities and all that or trying to chant Amitofo there's no point because death can be set resets everything right then everyone would go go like you know do what they want until they die or get get shot no the worst part is the death what happens after the death? No, not the death. What happens after the death? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll go deeper later, but people say afterlife, you know, doesn't matter whether you believe or not. It's just like gravity. I don't care what your belief is. Gravity is gravity. All right? You, you're all bound by gravity as long as you'll be in this orbit of the earth. All right? People who are not bound by gravity is when they're outside the orbit of the earth. People who are liberated from samsara, they do not fear this because they are outside the boundaries of six realms. But you and I were in the boundaries. All this will happen to us. This law applies to us. This law is, uh, we're bound by this law. So that's why this is important. Doesn't matter your belief or absence of belief. Doesn't matter your culture, your um, higher up, uh, how to say, your status, your position, even though, uh, even like you're the, um, priest or monks or anything doesn't matter your position you will be subject to this law it's fair and equal and it's go beyond this life it's applicable in many 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 life uh, why you're here is the result of your past and why where you will be going is the result of your presence that's another um, cross the uh, how to say timeless element of dharma karma now so he says, this is quite obvious. You do, you being wicked, uh, you have shortened your own uh, lifespan, all right? Because life is the most precious thing, right? Lifespan, you know, in the form of time, they will cut down your time here. Basically, basically everyone's on the timer, right? If you're normal and you do well, 80 years old, 70 years old is quite good. Uh, modern, modern medical standard might say 70 years old. Fine, 70 is the average. If you keep doing all the penalties, like driving license, right? You have the uh, demerit points. So you have 12 demerit points and everything is going to be incurred on you if the more um, offenses, traffic offenses you did. Same goes for this. So it's quite straightforward. So now, who is the police? Right? These are the police. So think of them in that way. They are all the police. They are not creators or anything. They are police. They are enforcing the law. All right? If you break the law, they will, following what you have uh, in your current record, incur the punishment that befits the crime. 
there are prosecutors as well, guys. Mm. But um, this is easier than human court because human court cannot see what happens when you're hiding out of the people's sight. In the court of karma, everyone can see what, you have, what you're doing, what you're thinking. So all the wickedness that you commit in the dark will be shown on the screen. Like the whole world. I can't help but bring back the court cases of that. Everyone can see what's happening there. More than that, you know, what you think, what you see, what you did, and you can't deny it, right? It is, it's right in front of your face. So basically, I'm back, going back to here. Um, those are all enforcers, half spirits, go off the north, and their job is to shadow each person and record. Uh, there are no mistakes in their job, guys. There's no, uh, maybe I um, like this guy, I dislike this guy. If they have that, they will not be there. They will be one of the person who get judged. So you can take it that way. It's very fair. So they shadow each person, they record each of the offenses. If the person have committed a great evil, 12 years are shaved off his lifespan. And small offenses warrant 100 days. So just like, you know, prison sentence and all that, or penalty on bail and all that. So this thing happens as well. Um, 大几多算, uh, 大多几, 小多算. So if you if you commit great offenses, then you take away your twelve years is gone. Um, why don't later we will see the crimes and offenses, and which one is big, which one is small. You, then we will understand why this happens. 小的时候多算, just if it's small penalty, then hundred days. So think of our lifespan. One person has each year has three hundred sixty days. So three small offenses takes away one year of your life. And big offenses takes away um, 四三十二, uh, 12 times the small offenses, 12 years of your life. So you can think on the reversed. Big merits also give you back 12 years of your life. Uh, but small merits gives you back 100 days of your life. Right? Numbers is, is like, don't worry about the numbers too much. It's just to give you that, um, like that, that perspective. Because think about our life, every day we spend 8 hours working, or 10 hours, some people. And what's left? Everyone has 24 hours, doesn't matter you're rich, you're poor, right? So that's what my dad keeps telling me, you only have 24 hours per day. I don't care your position, your youth, your age, uh, you're rich, you're poor, you're a president, or you're a beggar. 12, 24 hours, that's it. 10 hours was used already, 8 to 10, for work, commute. Count, count that 14 hours left how many hours do we sleep uh, I sometimes sleep 6 sometimes sleep 8 give it 8 so only 6 hours left how many hours do we go to shower eat drink uh, prepare dinner 4 <laughs> alright sit down have a coffee watch a movie 4 another 4 hours is what we can use on bettering ourselves in our terms we chan amit of or anything obviously I admit I didn't do much of <laughs> that so this four hours is so small, uh, so few. So taking away a one hundred days is all. It's taking away a, a lot of your lives. So don't think small offenses is nothing. <laughs> so yeah, Just give yourself that perspective. How many more years do we have left as well? Right. <sighs> so there are over hundred offenses, both severe and light, and those wish to live a long life must know. No one wants to die short of their natural lifespan, and Obviously, as a Buddhist, I do not want to live crazy long life. I just want to live a life that is long enough for me to do what I need to do and go to Pure Land. That's my goal. But in the common sense, yes, everyone wants to live a healthy, long life. Not long life, healthy, long life. In this case, Chang Shen doesn't only mean that you are living a long life. Living a long life on a bed, on a hospital bed, and living a long life, walking around, uh, enjoying the sceneries of the world with your grandchildren is an entire different thing guys see there are different levels you might get the same reward but the content of the reward is different if you are bedridden for the last 20 years of your life compared to someone who still served the nation like Queen Elizabeth for the last 20 like until 90 age or Master Ching Kong who still served the world um, served the, the, the sentience being by giving the talk until the age of 92 it's an entire different thing. I already leak out the secrets of having a long and healthy life is to serve people. Right? That's the reason why people live long life and able to enjoy because they 
allow other people to enjoy their life as well in other form. We, um, people who serve the nations, people who serve the communities, you know, they don't think on themselves. They serve other people. They only think, care about their job, their duty, responsibilities. So naturally, they were loved, they are respected, and because of their beneficial being benefiting others, the karma comes back. He doesn't ask for it, he will get a long life as well. Just a little side uh, tips on this. Um, <clears throat> Master Shin Gong has a, a go further and and just basically confirm that, you know. All right. And then we have Buddhist uh, perspective, confirms in the Da Wu Liang Su Jing, Da Mito Jing. So there are other, there are many versions of pure lands of trust, infinite lives of trust. Basically, it says the same thing. There are enforcers, policemen, prosecutors. Uh, they are recording of deeds. They are agents of karma, carrying the duty of inflicting punishments and reward without partiality or mystics. We can't do that in 100% human world. Don't worry, there are someone who can. So later when you look at the crimes and offenses, a lot of them, they are, they are like, they are, they are specific to, they are, some of them are specific to um, professions as well, you know? Um, because in ancient China, a lot of people want to be a government officials. And just to give you context, the government officials, you some, there's a lot of cases they are, sometimes it's negligence. They created um, and the negligence that caused people's life. That's one of the argument of, you know, abolishing death penalty is negligence happens. And if you have a death penalty on that person, voila, that's it. There's no way you can bring back their life if you put a wrong judgment on them. So same thing happened here. Uh, there's a karma of negligence uh, in your duty, especially in terms of deciding people's life or death. So back to here, each person is born, lifespan has been detected. Yep, everyone has a sort of like a, like a score they bring with them. All right, you need to reach a certain mark to be a human. To pass that mark, you have to be um, in the past life. Maybe this life we haven't been diligent, then we'll fall back to the three lower realms. Just for context, they they have the five precepts, you know, no killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, uh, no uh, lying, and no, uh, well, the last one is to protect you from committing the first four offense, no intoxicants. So if you can help onto these five precepts proper, then you will get the reward of human life or punishment of human life. Depends. Uh, if the persons decide to diligently cultivate virtues, their fortune can change for better. Basically, if you're hardworking for a right reason, then you will get better and better. Your life standard will increase, your wage will increase, your family will get better. There's, there's not uh, too much disaster following you. Even if falls, it will not affect you. If in the case, same case, if you get if you work hard to be uh, for the wrong reasons, like bank robbery, the obvious one, or um, you know in the in the in the civilian settings, maybe in office, uh, you are not being a good worker. You're trying to fish around, uh, create gossips, create uh, uh, dissent and stuff like that. Then, then you get negative karma. You get more miserable. Your know, people you met will not be nice, or the um, or sexual misconduct, that every single um, partner you came across will um, commit their own mis misconduct as well. They have their own hidden partner from you as well because you also betray your own uh, original wife or uh, husband. So it's karma. You only attract people that it's the same level of worth you are. Same thing. If you want to be a worthy person, then go out and be a person worthy of respect. These are, it can be seen in our society, right? Some people just earnest, honest, and do their stuff, um, speak their mind, uh, not fearing any uh, consequences, uh, do right by others. It may, may seem like they're poor, or may seem like they're not earning a lot. I've seen a lot of twisted thinking of saying, oh, these good people does not get teachings. Let me tell you, if you, if you do that, if you keep spreading this word, you will never get whatever good karma it is. Um, don't observe only in that short span, lifespan that you have. Right? You do not see the whole picture of that person's life. How can you say that he will not reap the good reward just because he's facing some difficulties or unjust at the moment? He might go to a better life. 
after this if he died. So just observe in the longer run, all right, for yourself as well. <clears throat> if a murderer is ordinary, they still live a long and happy life, we see the rice pan reduced and fortune is made. Basically, that's what I'm saying. After you die, that's the worst part. Right? It's not fair, right? If you die, everything offset. No, right? What you did, we we have to come back, including ourselves. We, we need to think what we're suffering right now, even though we might not seem doing it at this life. It's a result of the past. So we need to pay it back. If we're willing to accept the punishment, most of the time it will get light, lightened or lessened. Um, most of them is already happening on you. And then you suddenly um, hit with these issues, events. If we immediately think of this teaching, saying, you know, punishment, punishment fits a crime or cause and effect, what goes around comes around. If I understand and willing to accept whatever the punishment I have uh, because of my action in the past, um, most of the time these things are bearable, becomes bearable. And once it passed, right, without you adding more into provided you're not adding more to it, that's the toughest part of cultivation. How do you accept all the past karma consequences without adding more to it? Because when we accept the punishment, we want to revenge. Sometimes we might not know. We, we revenge at the condition, not knowing the cause of our uh, sufferings. We punish, you know, trying to get back at that person because of our anger. As a whole, that's, that's why understanding karma, then we understand the whole reason of Buddha or all the Ten Commandments from Christianity. Why do you have to restrain yourself? Because if you don't, you're going to create more causes of suffering that comes in any form of conditions that will keep going on for many lives. Part of the compassion of the famous one, the Guan Yin Pusa, is they do not want to see sufferings of the beings. What kind of suffering? Losing a limb is suffering, yes. War zone in Ukraine is suffering, yes. But what was worse than, there is a suffering worse than all this combined together, even all the domestic abuse, rape and everything, is to get the same thing again, going through this again in your next life. Like, this is painful enough, you know, getting uh, getting all the terrible crap that happens on you. And then, not enough. Next life, you still need to get that again. No one wants that, right? You won't, you won't wish this on your worst enemy. So that's where the compassion came from. And this is built on understanding of karma. So this is why this is a foundational lesson. Even modern day, we tell them to be moral and virtuous. There's no other way other than cause and effect. Because nothing hits you stronger than seeing the results of your action. Just telling you to be good is not enough anymore. To be a good, decent, upright human being, it's quite abstract for us. Or we can't see the example anymore as much as we would. Uh, news are mostly pro promote, uh, not promote, they usually broadcast a lot of negativities. Or uh, there are a few light shined in among this gloomy cloud. Yes, there are good people. I saw a lot of, uh, in US, there's a lot of good Samaritans, uh, people who actually, uh, you know, at the risk of their life or risk of their properties, they're trying to defend someone. Something like that. They, the news did promote that, but most of the time, all you see is things are going down to you in the world, you know, the wars and all that and all the bickerings, uh, celebrities and all that. So, so so what I'm trying to say is it's hard to see a good example to con to create a atmosphere of to be a good person right now. Community sense is getting lower. There's less community feel in the world. Like it's uh, sense of community is gone, not gone, it's weakened. So cause and effect is the way for now, from now on. Consequences punishments and then how to avoid punishment how to get rewards and then you test it yourself and you understand if I follow by this understanding the line of thinking I accept my punishments it's, uh, if it's unbearable there are many ways to deal with it you know you can um, in my experience I might go out for a jog or something because what I get is very light but if it's heavy um, I'm pretty sure I can bring up better example I can't just make light of people suffering like that sorry all right um and then yeah so that's it for chapter one i'm not going too deep into this um uh, sorry i'm reading off the line uh, next week i think i will try to um be more 
flexible. I mean, be more um, proactive. Because currently, I, I don't want to. I don't want to depart from this book at the moment. I'm not too familiar um, uh, with this because these are short words, but well, there's a lot of meaning in there. It's like classical Chinese in the classical sense. Like they are every four words. You can talk to one hour if you want, if you have proper examples. Every four words, and then this this is like okay, this is a quite simple principles and all that. But you can also talk about this, all right. And when you come to here, the way we conduct in Chinese is we bring one phrase, one phrase, one phrase, and then each phrase there is an example. Uh, the, talk about the meaning first, and then talk about the example that. Um, exemplifies the meaning that that gives light to the meaning like make it concrete for you guys for us uh, to follow um, and it's my job as well to find out the actual example for each of them so there are books that collects them and I will try my best to make it more relevant to the modern people the, but there are a lot of cases in the past that is it still applicable to us so following this um First section, I will uh, begin with the virtuous individuals. So the good side, the plus and the the pluses and the multiplications. All right, let's look at the good news first. All right, but it's only one chapter. The rest, you the rest is the rest is crimes and offenses that takes all the way to eighty four, um, and then the punishment of the offenses. All right, this shows. How to say echoes, uh, Bodhisattva uh, my red yeah Milapusa. He talk about the Bai Fa Mi Men Lun, the uh, treaties of the hundreds. Um, basically, it's a very um, how to, the, the consciousness only school Wei Shi Lun. In there, they talk about the um, in in our in our subconscious. We use the modern term subconscious, and how many how many components are positive? How many components are negative? How many components are um, neutral. There are four components that are neutral. There are 11 components that are positive. There are 25 that are negative. So it's very easy to be bad. Like learning bad takes only three hours, three, three days. Mix with some people in your hood, you know, get along and then suddenly you find yourself robbing a bank or some find yourself committing offenses already. To be good, you need to preserve yourself from the influences, you need to be aware of your things because you will, and uh, how to say, everything is reminding you to to do, uh, to go against the five precepts. You know, the TV is talk about violence, sexual misconduct, and all that. Uh, everything is reminding you to be, to go to the other way, and you have to fight against the stream, upstream, uphill battle. So to help you, karmic education is the best because it gives you that cruel, brutal reality of not following it. It's better than just saying that it's bad, don't follow it. Then you'd be like, ooh, what if I follow it? It's fun. Because you can't see the result yet. That's what happened to me. Like, I might not rob or anything, but misconduct in mind as well, you know? So, so those things you need to, you need to give yourself an assessment, like, oh, what, what kind of environment am I, am I in? Even though the environment may seem good, does my heart still pure and kind. If my heart is not pure and kind, that means I have every possibility to fall into the same um, same level as those offenders or become the offenders. The only difference is only the conditions. I could exactly be like him if I'm living, if I'm in the same uh, condition as he is. Right? Just because I don't have that condition push me to that direction. That's why I'm still here, still able to somehow stand on my ground. So understanding this, no one is inherently bad or no one is a saint in, 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 in the first place. We become more compassionate in understanding that. If I'm living like him or in his condition, born into the family he is, I might not do, I might do worse than him. I might be even worse than him. Who knows? Right? That's why it, keep, it brings you a, awareness of how do I get out of this thoroughly in its entirety. That's when Buddhism comes in the picture. 
but before that we need to understand the the whole process first um you know i'm just gonna pick to amass wealth with money and, uh, <laughs> oh yes see very re relevant to amass wealth with money that has no right to but instead changing to become modest and charitable to amass wealth with money that one has no right but instead of changing to become modest and charitable becomes arrogant and decadent <laughs> to avoid just persecution and punishment by luck or mercy but yet refuse to change one's shameless and criminal ways so yeah one of them is uh, uh, how to say trying to trying to think you know you, you're not going to be punished because you're not getting caught or uh, you're trying to put all your wealth into tax haven so that you can because you already earn billion it's not enough you need to earn another 20 billion um, the greed has no bound uh, instead of using it for rightful purpose you know to help people because money is like a resource like a, in Chinese they say money is like water right water must flow if water stuck in one place, it becomes mud. I mean, it becomes like uh, it's a dead water. Water has has to keep flowing so that it be, it benefits everyone. And in Taoism, the water is always going downwards towards the place without water to nourish them, to create lives, to become a condition for lives. So as the people with wealth who understand this law of karma, if they keep flowing, they will have endless source of water, which is endless source of income. And I will bring this example when we get there of a person who is a very famous um, figure in Chinese society, Cai Shen Ye, uh, the uh, god of wealth. And he's the, the real life uh, figure that this god of wealth is modeled after. Sang Yi, not Tao Yi. I don't know, it's back in the spring and autumn period. And how he able to keep getting wealthy, even he donate all his, all his, you know, properties. That's something we need to learn. Right? Nothing wrong with wealth. Getting wealthy have benefits the society. Definitely. But you need to benefit the society instead of benefit yourself. Because what can you do with yourself other than having a nice house, a Bugatti, and then with this nice Lamborghini uh, number 20, you only have one butt and one body, right? Give you, you know, if you're tall, what, six feet, six feet nine? I'm using an American unit. Come on, man. Six feet nine, man. Six feet nine is a very tall, isn't it? Uh, seven feet. Uh, seven feet. Give you seven feet. Okay, you can buy a what twenty feet bed just for yourself. What else? A house. How big? How big the house is? You can buy the top of the huge house with under a billion. If you own a a billion dollars, something like that. What I'm saying is, if you amass such an amount of wealth, you can let it flow, right? Flow with investment, yes, and then you still can use it to 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 benefit many people. I don't know, like it's just a new education of wealth is needed instead of just hoarding it. We need to learn how to use it, all right? Using it will generate even more wealth. I'll show you the example when we get there. Um, it's a real life example. He went to three places, give all his wealth back, give all his wealth away to people who need it, and then he get it back. No one can take away the ability to make wealth. The wealth is meant to flow, but the ability to make wealth is... No one can take it away, all right? All right, that's what I'm saying. Okay, um... Thank you so much for uh, bearing with me on the first session. It's a bit um, un disorganized, but um, I hope I can give you a insight in how um, this book comes into the picture of our you know, pure land umbrella. And I hope it goes beyond a pure land cultivators. Even you are a person who came across this and just say, hey, this is interesting, or um, I heard of this before, but I don't know what it is. Um, it is essentially a Taoist book, right? Um, we use a Buddhist reading on it because it it's actually enhancing our experience. Um, we're enhancing the experience on this book using the Buddha's uh, teaching. But if you read it on its own merit, it's really... Um, People misunderstood it as superstition, but it's not. I guarantee you. This is actually about how what is right, what is wrong. As you can see, section one, karma, cause and effect. No 
margin of error, no tolerance, 10%, minus 10%. No, exact retribution, exact response. All right. And then they talk about what is meritorious. Hence, what is the results of the meritorious deed? What's the response to it? And then they talk about, but the meat of the section is about the offenses, the crimes, comic crimes, comic offenses. Some of them are actual crimes, legally uh, impeded. Some of them are comic crimes, as in it's finer than legals, legal term, or even the common standard of societies. And and all these combined together, we call them crimes and offenses. And they listed 84 of them. I really like this translation. They make it easier. And then the last one is um, the punishment of the crime. Well, the second last one is chapter four is the punishment that befits the crime in details. And the wrap up of the entire treatise on response and retributions. I hope I'm this section, this first reading, I'll be very conservative try to stick close to the original text and I'll keep correcting myself as well um, if I have made any, uh, how to say, uh, vague or muddy uh, readings on it. So that's why I'm using the book as my um, foundation instead of just going off uh, because this one I do not want to get it wrong, really. Um, to give you a context, the person who actually studied this, Mr. Yu, Mr. Uh, Mr. Liao Fan, and then even before in the Song Dynasty, remember Song Dynasty was during the Mongolian 1200s. And Mr. Yu and Mr. Liao Fan is during 1600s, where the gunpowder is on in Europe. But anyway, um, so, so, so they have been practicing for many years, even now, 2022. So it's 800-ish years. Even before that, there are people who also practice on it, maybe. Or the record I can see is back to Song Dynasty. But, um, and it's used by a lot of government officials, especially people who sit very high up in the chain of command, who sit in the very posi high position of power. They usually uh, read a lot on this to remind themselves, because this one is actually pointing from family, you know, like merit, extramarital affairs, into a governmental level where negligence, charge of negligence, um, doing something that you could have been more, if you're more diligent in your job, especially in legal and prosecution in, in enforcement, you could have avoided this kind of thing. So it, it emphasized the importance of being diligent, being compassionate, being um, 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 careful, especially if your job in, involves people's livelihood or life. And then it goes to, you know, spiritual cultivation as well. I don't know about the other part. I know this too is very um, meat and of this book so I think it's very relevant to us as a professional like if you want to be in, in, in our professions in our family career and family it all boils down to that um, how do we you know uh, it's very current era of moral collapse and triple commission that's right um, the sense of family sense of community is loosening so this helped us to have a perspective on that if we can't bring back all of this at least in our own circle um, avoid this transgression that cause harm to yourself and your family and go towards the whole point is avoid the harms avoid the the, 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 the pitfalls that cause misery to your family and yourself and to your communities to your countries to your religion to everything and go towards a path that brings true happiness and the path that brings um, brings you fortunes you know, in actual fortunes or fortunes and good fortunes in forms of good relationships, good job, good people relationships, um, uh, good life or avoiding calamities. So this is the whole point of this book. The, act, the, op the operating principle is to ha help you to avoid, to tell you what to avoid and to tell you what to pursue. Okay. Uh, how much you want to pursue? Uh, how deep you want to avoid? It's depending on your goal. If you want to be a Buddha, oh yes. Yeah, that's a lot of a lot more work on top of this. But if you want to be a good person, this is also what you need. If you want to be Buddha, you cannot leave this. If you want to be a normal good person, you also cannot leave this. All right? All right. Same thing. Okay. So I'll wrap it up in five minutes over time. Uh, let's do the 10 time chanting and then we 
did take it our merits using the English Delphan book. Um, it's the same merit de dedication we did. A B Tuo Fo 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 A B 